Okay, let's try and do some damage. Oh, no, no, they're both on me. Okay, come on, guys. Yeah, there we go. They don't have ranged weapons. At least, I don't think so. So let's see what we can do here. Couching is going to be super fun to do. Maybe. <laughs> he says maybe, and then promptly gets out of the way of this guy that's ready to slash his face off. Nice. Ooh, in the neck. Is he dead? Yes. Whew. I thought to myself, wait a minute, is he alive? Obviously last time it didn't really go too well for me, so I might actually try a little bit of a different tact this time around. And we might try to... Oh yeah, it's absolutely terrible, isn't it? Oh, there we go, we got a headshot. Hello and welcome back to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. If you missed the previous series, I'd highly recommend checking it out. It is of us playing as a duelist. We were not allowed to use a shield and we were using one-handed weapons and staying on foot. And as you can no doubt tell from maybe the thumbnail or the title of this particular series, we're going to be playing with a custom faction that has been added to the game through a mod. If you'd like to check out my mod list and indeed my, my load order as well, then that is all detailed in the description. So anyway, we're going to be playing with the Tetsujin. That is the primary faction that I will be, um, should we say, favoring in this series. And that's it. I won't be using any other units except those units. And we will attempt to take over the entirety of the map alongside these guys. And that's what we're going to try and do. And for that very reason, I'm going to be taking the Vlandian culture. Uh, because obviously there's no custom culture right now. And I wanted to use the cultured start mod. Uh, which would actually allow us to pretty much skip all the annoying, mm, should we say, tutorial questing and things like that. But unfortunately, with custom factions, it gets a little bit complicated. And I was having a, a number of issues actually getting all of the mods to work well together in the first place. So obviously, that's a bit of an issue. But anyway, just coming back to the culture choice. I'm going to be picking Vlandians because it gives you 20% more upgrade experience to troops from battles. Everything else is fine and pretty good. I mean, Sturgeons, if you're going to be fighting in snow a lot, this is really good. Um, if you're going to be going for like more of a trade kind of thing, then Azurai is obviously really good. Extra speed burns for horsemen on the campaign map for the Kuzate. And as far as I'm aware... The Tetsujin, which is the faction we're going to be using the units from, they don't really have too many um, too many cavalry units, at least as far as I can tell. Anyway, we're going to be just randomizing a couple of times here. Just going to randomize a couple of times, and then we're going to make his height a little bit a little bit lower because I want him to be pretty fast. You know, I want him to be pretty fast on his feet, and bear in mind that he's more than likely maybe going to use a horse it really depends on what kind of weapons we can get because as I like to do in these themed series weapons and the armor that we wear is very determined by what is available in the marketplace by that particular faction because if uh, the, the uh, particular weapons that we are going to have access to are not long enough to be able to use them adequately on a horse then that's it. I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to be using those kinds of. Um, those kinds of. Uh, um, I'm not going to be using a horse in that case. You know. So anyway, um, I would actually like to get him with a a little bit of a beard here. Maybe uh, maybe something like this. That seems pretty nice. That seems pretty nice. Um, I'd like to change his eyebrow. Uh, eyebrow. No eye color. I'd like to change his eyebrow color to a little bit brown right there. I think he's. I think he looks pretty distinguished, actually. Not too bad, not too bad. So I guess we're just going to go with that. And now this is where things get a little bit dicey, because I'm not entirely sure what I want to be concentrating on here. But what I do know is that I would like to use one-handed and two-handed weapons. So I will probably be focusing on trying to find focus points for those skills. And I would also, thanks to those of you in the comments that left suggestions, by the way, the Tetsujin mod was actually linked to, to me by one of you. And I am very grateful for any, any suggestions that you gave, by the way. And I'm 
attempting to kind of combine a lot of the ideas that I got um, because apart from the fact that this faction is looking very cool at the moment, I'd also like to use a crossbow. I know a lot of people voted for, well, not voted, but, you know, basically upvoted someone else's comment that was basically crossbow with a camel. And I was like, okay, well, probably not a camel because we've been in the Azerite territory for quite some time. So I'm probably not going to go and do that, but I would like to potentially do something with a crossbow so i'm thinking that that's probably going to be something that we'll try to go for here i don't really want crossbows only though so i'm going to go for smithing and two-handed not going to do too much smithing i don't think but we'll see how that goes obviously throwing weapons could be quite important here as well and I was initially thinking that I would play with a bow because obviously Tetsujin, it's very Japanese inspired. And of course, uh, Japanese, they're not really known for using crossbows. As far as I'm aware, they're much more known for using Yumi bows and, and very, very large ones at that. And um, yeah, so that's just me. That's just me. So I'm going to go for additional two-handed and throwing right there. We've got to be a little careful though, because I don't want to go overboard on that. Roguery and one-handed might be cool. Crossbow and tactics. Yeah, I will take crossbow and tactics. Thank you very much. Roguery and throwing. Throwing and one-handed. Polum and one-handed. Riding and bow. Crossbow and engineering. That might actually be quite good. I will take crossbow and engineering. Um, now bear in mind that I'm going to try and balance my focus points in such a way so that it doesn't um, max out any particular skill just yet because I'm going to be a little bit more um, aware of my um, of my skills this time around because we seem to get to a bit of a point in the series where our character is just kind of like stuck and we kind of need to do something about that. So I'm going to try and rectify that if I can. Anyway, we have athletics and roguery. I have no athletic skill right now, which is pretty bad because if I'm not going to be riding a horse, then this is going to be very important for us. I think I'm going to do this. And then what else do we have? Ah, oh, one handed and athletics. That seems pretty cool. Do we have any more crossbows? No, don't have any, don't have any more crossbows. But I'm thinking we'll go for one-handed and athletics. And now we get to choose a name. Now, amusingly enough, Bruce, right? Usually that would be the name that I'd use in Japanese-inspired mods. And most notably, I used to play a mod called Gekko Kujo, which was in Mountain Blade Warband. And if, if you haven't seen that series, highly recommend checking it out. There's a whole bunch of videos. There's over 130 um, videos on that mod. And it is amazing the progression that that mod's development goes through because initially it starts off with very basic sieges, but a very cool environment. You get to play in feudal Japan, basically, and you get to see all these cool units and everything and all the, all the armor and the weapons and so on. But then the mod creator completely shakes things up and changes how sieges work. And you're running through an enemy's town. And back then, that was unheard of. In Bannerlord, obviously, that's been a bit more normalized, but this was way back. This was years and years ago. So it's actually very cool. Anyway, I'm probably going to be playing with... Who should I play with? Because Bruce doesn't really work, because I've just played as Bruce. So I, what about... Um, what about Byron? We haven't done we haven't done Byron lately, so let's let's have a go with Byron here, and we'll see how that goes. All right, so we're going to be playing with realistic everything, as I always do. I never change this, by the way. So you know, if you ask later on, then obviously you know just know that. Uh, auto allocate clan member perks. All right, so I have Bannerlord tweaks installed. All right, so Bannerlord tweaks does come packaged with the ability to remotely. Um, manage your companions and, and things like that. So you don't necessarily need to, um, you know, uh, have this on. But I'm going to turn it on nevertheless, just because I don't really want to, if we have a huge amount of companions, I don't really want the micromanagement aspect of that. Anyway, we're finally in the game. All right, finally in the game. Whew. Okay, that was that was um, that was pretty pretty significant, wasn't it? All right. So first things first. What I'm going to do 
Uh, I have no idea what to call myself. But uh, I, I guess, I guess, bear tilt. I mean, pff, what else is there, really? You know, what else is there? All right. So because this is very much Japanese inspired, I'm going to try and look for a uh, somewhat, um, uh, somewhat Japanese. Uh, it's never going to work, is it? It is never going to work. There's just nothing like that here. I mean, we could go for something that's a little bit, um, you know, icon-based. Or we could just literally go for, like, um, maybe a katana or something like that. Because, obviously, there are katanas available in the new faction that has been added to the game. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking out, checking that out. Ooh, could go for a dragon, actually. But that's a little bit more... Maybe it's a little bit more Chinese. Uh, well, uh, whatever the case, maybe we should just go with that. Is that is that a dragon? Is that does that really look like a dragon to you? I don't know. Uh, I don't really want to go for black either. Black is not really going to be too good. Should we go for red? Yeah, I think red seems pretty nice, and maybe something uh, something along these lines. Maybe something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it will do. It will do. Why not? Why not? All right, so we've already gained a level, of course. So let's just go over to our character screen here. Now, because we have Battle Lord perks, I'm going to be gaining one attribute point per level. So it's going to make things a little bit easier for us because obviously in the previous two series, I haven't been playing with Battle Lord perks at all. Um, Battle Lord perks. Battle Lord tweaks. Have I, been, have I been calling it Battle Lord perks this whole time? I don't know. But if I have, I apologize. Anyway, point is... I was basically not able to get my Vigor um, above 8, which is absolutely fine. Don't really mind that. But every single other attribute was about baseline at 2 or at 3. And in my opinion, that's unacceptable. So <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty happy that uh, we can maybe do something about that. Anyway, I am probably not actually even going to be spending my, uh, my points right now because I would like to go and see what kinds of weapons are available i'm actually gonna just say hey i'm just gonna give you 146 gold and i'm just gonna move on i'm actually not wanting to bother with these guys right now anyway i would like to very much be able to check out what kind of weapons are available in the new towns because as far as i'm aware there are katanas i don't know whether they are one-handed or two-handed or both as far as i'm aware i think they are both so that's definitely something to bear in mind because that means that I can pretty much just spend my points however I like and then we're going to be absolutely fine. Now bear in mind that I would also like to get crossbows. So let's just take a quick look here. Do they have any crossbows available? I know that, ah, there we go, there we go. They do actually have some crossbows available. Unfortunately, they are extremely expensive. Well, they're not that expensive, but they're expensive from my perspective at the moment. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell these sell these things. I'm not going to be using a shield, by the way. I'm going to sort of borrow a little bit of a, uh, shall we say, a little bit of an attribute from the Duelist playlist, but also going to be borrowing a little bit from, you know, Japanese history, because generally they tended not to use shields that often. That wasn't to say that it was impossible for them to use shields or anything like that, but generally they wouldn't, as far as I know at least. Anyway, so let's just take a quick look here. Uh, I don't know why I wouldn't buy these bolts. All right, so there we go. Wonderful. So I'm just going to pay 450 for this. So that's pretty good in my opinion. And now I'm actually happy to do battle. I'm actually happy to do a little bit of battling. So I'm going to just um, take that horse off me so that I can maybe get some athletic skill because obviously I think I have more in athletics. Yes, I do. As you can see right here, I have more in athletics than I do in a riding skill. So I'm actually going to be increasing my endurance and increasing my athletic skill to begin with. And hello there. All right, our first fight. Let's see what we can do. Now, bear in mind, these are just looters, but... They do have the ability to take me prisoner very, very easily indeed. And, of course, because we are playing on a very high difficulty setting, it is maybe going to be somewhat problematic, but that was nice. Okay, I've got to be a little bit careful here. I've got to be a little bit careful. Uh, I'd like to, you know, I should have just stayed on my horse. Oh, no. I should have just stayed on my horse at this point. All right, come on now. I don't have huge amounts of athletics either. Ooh. 
Okay, we got taken down. We got taken down, unfortunately. But what are they actually going to take from me? That's the main thing that we've got to bear in mind here. They didn't take anything. All right. Well, that's actually fine. That is actually perfectly fine with me. I really don't mind that. As long as they don't take anything from me, that is all that I really care about. Oh, there we go. They actually just released me. Okay. <laughs> I don't see the problem with that because we actually leveled up huge amounts of skills as a result of that too. So that that makes even more of a difference, doesn't it? That's great. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to check out Bannerlord perks very, very quickly to see if any of the crossbow perks are having some issues. No, in actual fact, it seems like every single perk in the crossbow tree on the current game version that I'm playing on, which is 1.5.5, is working, with the exception of this one. At the very end, which I personally don't care about, because it's highly unlikely we're going to reach 250 with crossbows. But everything else is working as intended, so let's take a look. Your crossbow attacks ignore armor below 20, and range troops are 20% cheaper to recruit. I think that's useless personally. Aiming with your crossbows 25% 25, 25 faster. In my opinion, that's fantastic. So I will be indeed taking that. And then we obviously have athletics as well. Increases your movement speed by 10%. Where were you just a minute ago? Morning exercise. I'll take that. Thank you. And we also have one-handed weapon proficiency. Now, this may very much look like the previous series with the duelist. But just bear with me. It's going to change very dramatically once we get into Tetsujin. Um, a territory. At least I, I think it probably will. All right, so we're going to be quite even about our um, statistic distribution as well, as you can no doubt see. I'm going to leave athletics at three focus points. I'm going to leave crossbows at three, and I'm going to try to get to about five statistic in endurance and uh, control as fast as I possibly can, because that's going to give us a nice broad spectrum of experience gain that is not going to hinder us too much and that's what we primarily care about at this point in the game so let's see what we can do once we get over to horoshi horoshi is very very close by we also have medicine leveling up a little bit as well bear in mind that obviously because banner lord tweaks is installed we do get a slight experience boost which I very much appreciate because that makes things much easier for me specifically because I'm obviously attempting to create a series for, you know, videos, you know, so that obviously makes a difference. Anyway, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to recruit anyone from here, but hopefully I will be able to take a look. Aha, hello there. Yeah, so there's a fine steel katana right there. It is a two-handed slash one-handed weapon. They also have some long spears here as well. And ooh, they got some cool. They got some cool stuff actually. All right, so let me just take a look at their armor as well. And they have, they do actually have plate as well, as a number of other things. Do they have any? They have some. Ooh, they have some very nice gloves. Their chest pieces are not that good, so we're gonna have to do something about that. I would like to be able to go into. Oh dear, there is actually a tournament. Okay, I will participate in the tournament. Are there any vassals here? No, there are no vassals here. But unfortunately, I only have the ability to spend 400 gold. Which is, well, let's just say uh, somewhat problematic. All right, let's see what we can do then. Okay, it's going to give me 1600 if I win the entire thing. Oh, and I'm also injured, of course. I forgot about that. Very good. Okay, let's try and do some damage. Oh, no, no, they're both on me. Okay, come on, guys. Yeah, there we go. Oh, nice. Nice, there we go, we got him. <laughs> oh, everyone lived. Fantastic. Okay, I mean, I gained a huge amount of skill points in two-handed as well, because I do have some focus points in that skill, which is really cool. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have any additional money to bet. So I'm just going to have to be happy with what I have, and I have to be extremely careful about taking damage here as well. Because bear in mind that my swing speed is pretty awful. More glory! Oh! <laughs> nice. Alright. Very good, very good. Okay, I have to concentrate, you know, in these kinds of situations when I, you know, I rush in where everyone else fears to tread and, uh, you know, get myself into a rather sticky situation because obviously I have very little HP right now. Die, you 
Oh, I can't believe, I can't believe I beat that. Because this guy was massive with the amount of uh, proficiency. That was crazy. Okay, oh dear. Now we have an issue. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm going to be able to do something. Bear in mind, this is a slashing and little pokey weapon. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm actually maybe going to do all right here. Nice. I might do all right. I might do all right. We're getting some good experience gain as well from this too. I think I have a little bit, uh, a couple of focus points in pole arms, so that might um, that might help us out a little bit. I'm, I I don't really want to aim for his mount. If I aim for his mount, we're going to have issues. So I'm going to try and aim for the rider as much as I possibly can. But unfortunately, he is making this rather difficult. As you can see, he's got a almost, he's basically perfect so far. His, his defense has been absolutely flawless. And that is very, very bad for me. Oh, nice, nice hit, nice hit. I knew that was going to come immediately. But as soon as he lowered his defenses, I was like, yes, an opening. Ooh, slow, extremely slow. He's... I feel like his proficiency is through the roof, this guy. I feel like he's going to absolutely murder me if he gets close. Okay, I'm going to try to get a little bit of distance between me and him. I'm going to try and use his speed against him if I can. Well, it's actually kind of amazing that we gain experience even if our attack is blocked. I quite like that. Because as you can see, we're gaining good amounts of skill points right now. Oh, we got him. We got him. Okay, I can't believe it, to be honest. I cannot believe it. All right, very nicely done, Mr. Byron. And we gained, we actually gained 3,600 from that and 10 renown, mainly because I basically put the tournament sliders all the way up in Bannerlord Tweaks. And that, that, that's basically the only setting that I maxed out, mainly because I didn't really want to be doing a huge amount of tournaments unless I was in um, Tetsujin territory and I would have assumed that there's probably not going to be that many around here so I was wanting to make it worth it if you know what I mean I didn't really want to be running around and doing the exact same stuff that I did in the duelist series so that's the reason for that anyway increases your damage with pole arms by two percent increases your damage while mounted all right we'll just go for pikeman and we also have two-handed right here two-handed weapons you will have 10 better handling 10 percent better handling increase your damage against shields with two-handed weapons by 30 percent Hmm, I'm actually not sure about this. I think either one of these is actually really good because if you can destroy the enemy's shield really fast, then that's really good. But obviously you want your weapon to be quite quick to swing. So I'm going to go for strong grip. And then we're going to go for one focus point in two-handed, another two in one-handed. And then we're going to get another point in endurance, another point in con uh, in control. And then I think we're probably going to try and level up scouting skill a little bit. So cunning is going to be something that I'll try to spec into a little bit too. And there we have it. All right. So let me just go to the nearby villages. It's kind of a bit annoying how we're... Um, not able to get any uh, any troops just yet but i assume that's just because most of the vassals in the area are monopolizing pretty significantly actually the amount of troops that are available in the town at the moment so that's kind of unfortunate there is uh there is a quest here but do i really want to do it well i suppose yes but also no at the same time <laughs> so let me see ah there we go we do have a couple of people right here i Oh, this guy has minus one with us for some reason. Why does he do Why does he not like us? That's kind of interesting. I'm not entirely sure why he doesn't like us, but all right. Okay, that's uh, that's kind of a bit weird. Anyway, now that we have a little bit of cash, you know what we're gonna do? Oh yeah, we're gonna buy that katana. We're gonna buy that katana. We're gonna unequip this, and this is going to do a lot of damage, or at least I hope so. And otherwise, we're going to buy some armor as well. If we can, we're probably going to buy... I don't even know what's really good at the moment. And I don't have enough money for this. So I'll just buy a very cheap helmet. 
That's very expensive as well. Oh yes, I also have better looting installed, but I actually installed a different version of better looting, which gives us a reduced chance of getting rare items. So the default version is what I was using before, but this one gives us a slightly reduced chance to gain those items because I think it was a little bit powerful, a little bit too powerful potentially, and um, I kind of wanted to get a little bit of balance there. Ooh, look at this. This is, oh, these are some cool, yes, this is very nice. I like it. Okay, we're looking pretty good. I feel like we're looking pretty good right now. Gonna be, oh, that's actually, that's actually quite expensive. Oh, I don't even need to buy this. Hmm, okay. Yeah, because I actually gained this from the tournament. I, I completely forgot. I completely forgot about that. Okay, so I'm not going to be buying these. And I'm instead going to buy something else, I suppose, because they are a little bit too expensive, unfortunately. I, I feel like they're too expensive, at least. So I'm going to just take these back, and I'm just going to pay for the katana and then move on. And that's pretty much it. Really wish this guy didn't, um, didn't dislike us already. That's kind of annoying, isn't it? Okay, so what is this guy? Train troops. All right, fine. I will try to train troops for you. I don't like training troops, by the way. I personally feel like this particular quest is extremely irritating. But... <laughs> It's early on in the game. We've kind of got to, you know, appease people and try to make friends as, as fast as we possibly can. All right. Oh, he deals in grain. 50 loads of grain. You could probably find a market. It will pay you a total of this. I loan you the product. You sell it whatever you like and bring me back 400 dinars. Right. Okay. Well, I easily have the money. Uh... I mean, 50, if I sell that at 10, yeah, sure, okay, fine, let's do it. Um, I'm going to take it just basically, I'm just going to just gonna buy it. Uh, actually, wait a minute. That's just a little bit less than 10 each, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, no, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna buy it. Why not? It gives me a little bit of charm skill and uh, some renown as well, which I suppose is decent. I mean, it's not not great obviously, but just getting that, those little small relation increases can really make a big difference in the end. Uh, this guy needs manual laborers, so hopefully we'll be able to find some looters to fight relatively soon. Nine prisoners he needs. And who's this guy need? Oh, extortion by deserters. I doubt I'm going to actually be able to... Yes, you don't have enough troops for this. That's what I thought. All right, so I've just accepted a bandit hideout quest, and apparently there are Tetsujin vagrants there. So we're going to be heading on over, and assuming we can maybe even uh, complete this particular task, it's going to be very, very good for us. Okay, so these guys are actually attempting to attack me right now. They have rogues and trained rogues. Let me actually just have a look at these guys. Whoa, they're actually pretty good. They're actually pretty good. This might be, uh, this might be bad. Hmm. The rogues are not too bad. Okay, wait a minute. Can, am I faster than this guy? Yes, I am extremely fast. Wow, okay, that's pretty good. So now we should be able to move on to here. I have no idea how many there are in the hideout. Oh, I would like to fight these guys, actually. Yes, perfect. Okay, look at the combat strength. The combat strength is so dramatically in their favor. It's crazy. All right. I'm going to try to level up my crossbow skill, and we're going to see how we do. Now, obviously, I do have a, a katana right now, and uh, you can use it two-handed. You can also use it one-handed, as you can see right here. You can change stances however we like. And I think... Oh, all my people are terrible, aren't they? Oh, dear. Uh, I remember crossbows now. Come on. Let's aim quickly. Yeah, get him in the head. Very nice. Okay, let's try and deal some damage to these guys. Bear in mind that this is actually a... Oh, got murdered. Got murdered, and my guys are now scattering. Ah, I'm going to have to retreat the party, unfortunately. Mm, it's all because I died, you know? It's all because I died. That was really, really bad. Mm. Oh, well. Can't do much about it. Can't do much about it. We did get one kill, which was actually quite nice, which gave us a huge amount of crossbow proficiency. So that's always that's always good. But uh, now it's going to be very difficult for us to get any uh, 
any leeway on this um, on this particular bandit hideout. So let me actually just take a quick look. How long is it going to take for all these things? So it's going to take uh, 28 days for this to uh, expire. This is going to take 28 days. This will take 57 days. So we just need to train troops for him. Uh, okay. Right. Well, most of them have died. Oh, actually, no, no. Only uh, only one of them has died. So I suppose that's... <laughs> is that is that good? All right. So this is actually something that I am very excited about. I've just accepted a task to go and deliver the herd to, um, to this particular place. And this is going to be very, very important for us to do because apart from the fact that it's going to give us good money, it's also going to give me the opportunity to restore my HP. I'm still attempting to do that. Oh, this guy needs seed grain. Fantastic. That is great. What did I buy before? I bought some seed grain. Oh, yeah. 33 bushels. All right. That is absolutely fantastic. I have exactly that amount, actually, I believe. I have quite a lot. And there you go. Done. 500 charm experience. We gained a little bit of extra charm skill and obviously some money. And we now also have the opportunity to sell these step horses. We'll get, we're going to sell five of them for 760. I'm also going to sell my arming sword because I don't actually want to keep it at the moment and i would also like to buy something from here i would like to buy something cool so maybe some uh, maybe a chess piece that actually looks looks the part shall we say that would be uh, quite nice unfortunately it doesn't seem like most of these are very protective which is the main problem here uh, i think i just haven't found the right um, the right armament just yet. As you can see, most of these are just recruit stuff, which is not really going to help me out right now, unfortunately. And we do have uh, some spears. Ooh, that's a very nice pole arm. Look at that. You even have spear bracing with this thing. You can also couch lance with it too, and it has a length of 245. It may very well be that I want to have a horse as a backup because then I'd be able to use a horse and this weapon I'm actually gonna buy this I'm gonna buy that right away because I feel like that is super super cool to do and I think what we're gonna do is I'm going to buy a desert horse and we're gonna buy some of the the armor as well and there we go okay so we're going to do that and then we're going to speak to tori the ironmonger who is the person that we need to hand this quest into there you go and we're going to get a little bit of extra charm skill of course overpriced raw materials and caravan ambush i don't think i'm going to be able to do the caravan ambush unfortunately i think that's a bit too uh a bit too powerful for my liking at the at this point and um yeah it is it is proving to be rather a challenge to gain uh, a significant amount of troops from these places, as you can see. All right, so we now have this. So can I use my um, can I use my crossbow? Yes, I can use my crossbow on a mount. That's actually fantastic. So let's just put this here, put this here, and we're now going to go in against these. Oh dear. Yeah, there's two of them. We don't really want to do that. My spotting skill is absolutely garbage right now. So obviously I couldn't tell that there were two groups there. But now, now there's just one. So we should be able to deal with these guys without too many difficulties. Because as far as I can tell, they don't have ranged weapons. At least I don't think so. So let's see what we can do here. Couching is going to be super fun to do. Maybe. <laughs> He says maybe, and then promptly gets out of the way of this guy that's ready to slash his face off. Yes. All right. Let's get out my crossbow. I think this is probably going to be a little bit easier for me to use. Oh, nice. Very good. Ow. Are you serious? He really did that much damage to me? Nice. A little bit of extra damage there, too. And uh, maybe we can do a little bit of a slash. No, never mind. The AI is too good for me. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're not doing too badly. We're not doing too badly. Nice. Take out that guy. And my guys are doing fantastically. Why are they doing so, so well now? They were doing absolutely terrible before. It's probably because I got taken out, right? And, and that is a huge, huge morale penalty to them. But there you go. We did fantastically right there. Although... Me specifically, not so much, but 
Yes, our, our people did great. Okay, so we gained 5.3 renown, 1.3 morale. No influence just yet, of course. And I'm going to attempt to um, maybe see if I can recruit these guys and maybe get them to join our army. But there you go. We've got some nice armor right there and actually some pretty good stuff. Wow. Yeah, some pretty good stuff. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Did we, did we have any level ups? Yep. Everyone leveled up. That's fantastic. Okay. So now this is where I get to show you the troop tree. All right. So it's a very small troop tree. Nothing really uh, too dramatic or anything like that. Very simple. But that is the beauty of it. Because as you can see, it goes into a wide variety of different things. So the footman specifically, actually, wait a minute. Here we go. This is the full <laughs> this is the full tree. Because the footman obviously goes into a spearman or a trained footman and then goes into a sword warrior or a sword master on the left side and then you have shield warrior and vanguard. These guys actually do come equipped with shields, which I think from a gameplay perspective is perfectly fine. But obviously, if you want to be a little bit more sort of um, adhering to the way that um, the Japanese fought in the past, then obviously you can you can do that if you want to. It's up to you. You know, it's all player choice at the end of the day. Otherwise, you have archers. These archers eventually become longbowmen and then veteran longbowmen, and they can also have they also have mounted archers, which is pretty fantastic. But if you don't want to do that and you want to go for spearmen, then obviously you can create Naganata uh, warriors, which are um, just a, another variant of spearmen, and then they go into Naganata riders. But if you don't want that and you don't want them to be slashing around all over the place, then you can actually cause them to use a yari, which is obviously the same weapon that I have. Uh, at my disposal as well. So if you just want them to be couch lancing into enemies, then you can of course do that too. And these are all fantastic looking units and you can just imagine a sea of black armored units just swarming over the land like darkness and just, ah, it's going to be super, super fun to see. Anyway, I actually don't know what I'm going to be doing because I think I'd probably like infantry. I'd like to go for some vanguards to begin with. So I'm going to go for all infantry right now. And we can also level these guys up. Uh, can we level them up any further? No. Okay, so I believe... Send the troops back. There we go. Okay, so we send the troops back and we gain 2,400 gold. <laughs> wow. That was actually... Uh, what? That was insane. Okay. That was actually uh, much, much larger a reward than I... Uh, anticipated anyway we do get the opportunity to now convert these rogues to our side and it does t seem to turn out that they are upgradable which is actually quite nice because that means that i don't have to worry about veterans respect which obviously is a thing that i had to worry about in a previous series where you would need to get this one skill this one perk to be able to um uh, well should we say upgrade uh, bandit units and uh, it seems like I don't have to, I, don't, I don't I don't need that right here so that's pretty cool okay so we've got some looters we might as well fight some regular looters if um <laughs> Ooh, these guys might actually murder me are you serious they're just regular looters yeah they are just regular looters okay this is actually kind of weird how they have so much combat strength I am a bit worried about this because I'm only at 52% HP right now and 52% HP uh, especially when you're playing on maximum difficulty settings, it is uh, not enough. It is is not going to be enough HP to be able to see you through to the end of the fight. Okay, so these guys are going to have um, rocks and stones and so on, but they're not going to have anything else, and I can basically just couch lance them to death, or at least I hope so, and it seems like that seems to be quite good so far. Not too bad. My horse seems to be um, holding up quite nicely. Unfortunately, I'm still pretty awful at using a pole arm right now because I am not used to this one bit. I have not been used to using a pole arm in quite some time. So there's obviously that. Anyway, I do have a crossbow as well, so we might as well use this a little bit. Oh, did I really miss? Yes. <laughs> I did really miss that. Yes, that was fantastic. Very good. Okay, let me see if I can just get in there. Nice. Oh, bonked him. Bonked him on the head. Okay, we're having some issues here, actually. 
We are having some pretty significant problems, but I think we should be... Oh, oh dear. Oh, uh, actually, no, we're not okay. I'm going to take this opportunity. Yes, Tetsujin Footman, very nice. You, you uh, did some good work right there. Nice headshot. Okay, I... Did they all get murdered? Ah, uh, most of them. Yes, most of them. Oh, well, never mind. Nice. Ooh, in the neck. Is he dead? Yes. Whew. I thought to myself, wait a minute. Is he alive? <laughs> oh, that was close. All right, there you go. 6.7 are now not too bad. And we did gain a good amount of riding skill too. I'm not going to be taking these looters because they just level up into Imperials. And as I said before, I'm not going to be using any other units with the exception of the units that we already have at our disposal from this faction. So otherwise, we're just going to be taking all of these. Unfortunately, our capacity has now become exceeded. So I will have to go to a nearby, um, nearby village. Hopefully this one may have a little bit of yeah there we go they might they, they have a little bit of money so i should be able to sell a couple of things here i'm just going to sell some of the cheaper goods so that i can reduce my gonna take this back there we go so i can reduce my carry capacity what's actually going on here why am i uh why am i suffering so badly from from being over encumbered oh well i suppose it doesn't really matter too much i could buy some additional oh i could buy some cotton actually and sell that uh, i'm not going to be doing any trading in this in this series i don't believe but yeah there's always an option there's always an option for that okay so i have very few uh, yes i have very few units okay let me be very careful here then but we did get more level ups no doubt yes we got more level ups so let's go for um what do we want them to level up into yes we want them to go into trained footman and we're going to get another rogue because the other one died, of course. Fantastic. And then we're going to see if we can restore ourselves enough just to be able to make our way through the territory without being attacked. Anyway, this gives me a good opportunity to actually show you the world map. So you can see here, this is where the Tetsujin are currently located. They're down in the southeastern portion, just past, uh, actually nestled in by the side of the Kuzate and the Azarai. And I think that's a pretty cool place for them, to be honest, because it kind of adds just a little bit of extra flavor to the game world. Because as it stands right now, mostly the Kuzate are taking over the game uh, in most cases. And, well, it's nice to see that there's, um, there's a new faction that can maybe shake things up a little bit. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyway... Uh, I don't think we can take on this hideout right now, but I only have 11... Actually, no, I have I have quite a few days to do this one, but I have 19 days to do the other one. And we also need to think about taking prisoners. That's actually something I should have done. I should have taken that looter prisoner. That would have made more sense than letting him go. Ah, uh, we do have some more prisoners here. All right, so here we go. Now, obviously last time it didn't really go too well for me, so I might actually try a little bit of a different tact this time around, and we might try to... Oh, yeah, it's absolutely terrible, isn't it? Oh, there we go. We got a headshot, and we actually gained 14 skill points in riding as a result of that. That is insane. And now maybe I can get another headshot right here, too. Very nice. Well, that was actually some pretty decent damage, actually. Oh. Well, I'm taking a lot of damage for nothing at this point. Yes, very good. Okay, let me just get out my crossbow again then. See if I can maybe do some more damage with it. Nice, there we go. Oh yes, anytime we can snipe, that is a win. Okay, do some poking. Nice. Additional poking required. There we go. And I believe we're absolutely fine right now. I don't think we're going to have any issues. And I think that's it. Yep. Fantastic. All right. That is, that is, that is all we needed. That is all we needed. Great. Okay. So hopefully I'm going to be able to take quite a few of these. <laughs> yes. Not in a million years. Taking these guys prisoner is going to be uh, actually quite difficult to do. So I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do it. But we're going to have to make it work somehow. So... 
yeah, that's going to be kind of interesting. Anyway, once I get to the nearby town, I was actually hoping I could get to the nearby town. Um, do they have any horse? Ah, there is a horse village right there. I've got to be a bit careful about these looters because I could very easily get murdered by them. But we're going to go into the village here and buy some horses. Going to buy some mules to begin with because I just want to get a little bit of extra um, carry capacity right there. And we might should I buy some horses as well to try and increase our our main speed? I mean, I had 8.1 and now I have 9.8 because we have such a small party. It's actually crazy. Okay, so we can just recruit some more people from there. Bear in mind, I still only have an army capacity of about 20 units. So me expanding my army at the moment isn't really going to make too much difference. Wow, there's a really nice helmet right there for 21,000. That's extremely expensive, but definitely something I'm looking forward to using later down the line all right there's nothing else here for me either but that gives me an opportunity to sell all our stuff so that's exactly what i'm going to do sell for 1800 right there and i'm going to sell all of this stuff as well that's going to be another uh, nice little bit of cash and i believe that is it all right there you go okay so I think that seems like a pretty decent place to end this episode off here. And if you would like to check out any of the mods featured in this episode, then there is a, well, mod list and um, load order down below. And um, hopefully you will enjoy uh, the theme and the, the plot and the objective that I have set out so far in this series. And as always, thank you very much for your support. And I'll see you next time.